Moving on now to video two of the algebra series and video number 17 overall, we're going to talk about factoring expressions. And factoring is basically just simplifying something uh, or translating it into another form that we can work with a little bit more easily. For the purpose of the SAT, being able to factor is so useful because a lot of the problems may look ugly on the surface, but if you can factor them, you'll actually be able to see that, oh, it turns out it's not as bad as I thought. I can do this, I can do that. Uh, okay, I, I got the answer. Um, so there are three, there's obviously, obviously a lot of ways to factor uh, in, in all of mathematics, but on the SAT, they're really just going to look for three types of factoring uh, that they're actually going to test. Now, these types of factoring, they're never generally going to give you a problem like factor this expression, you know, colon, and then they'll give you an expression. That's something you might see in your math class, but on the SAT, that's too straightforward. As we've talked about many times, and we'll continue to talk about, the SAT is not about talking about giving you straightforward math problems that you've seen in math class. It's much more about uh, giving you SAT-style problems, and that's a very different uh, approach to math. So let's look at the three kinds of uh, factoring you'll see. The first is the difference of two perfect squares. So if you have something like x squared minus y squared, this can be factored into x plus y times x minus y. This is something you should memorize uh, and be able to recognize on sight because a lot of SAT problems can be made much more simpler if you can immediately recognize this. Why is this the case? Well, let's, say, let's take something like x squared minus 16. This is just x plus 4, x minus 4 by our model. And how does this work? Well, let's go back and you know, refoil these guys and see what happens here. So x times x will be x squared. x times 4 at minus 4 will be minus 4x. Plus 4 times x is plus 4x. Plus 4 min times minus 4 is minus 16. And the key to these difference of two perfect squares is that this middle term cancels out. This is why it takes this form that it does. And all you're left with will then just be x squared minus 16. So being able to recognize this is so critical. Uh, to the SAT because it's something that they're not going to test you on overtly. They're not going to say, you know, factor this expression, but they may include it on a kind of problem, and if you can recognize it, it'll make it a lot easier to, to finish. Number two uh, is something I call undistributing. That's not very grammatical, but that's okay. Um, or finding common factors. And this is a, the idea of, let's say we have something like 4x minus 2x. No, that's bad. Uh, not a good expression. Let's do, OK, x squared plus 3x. Well, what do these guys have in common? What are their common factors? And if you forget what a factor is, go back to uh, the factor video. But a factor, in general, is something that can divide into something equally without leaving a remainder. So what is something that is a factor to both of these? Well x is a factor to both, right? x can go into x squared, right, leaving x behind. And x can go into 3x, leaving 3 behind. So what we can do is we can, I like to think of this in motion. I, I'm going to pull an x out of both of these terms. And I have to do it to both. I can't do it to 1. And then I'm going to lay out my parentheses. And then whatever's left over in, over here, I'm going to put back in my parentheses. So this could be x left over here and 3. And now when you reverse it, when you distribute back, you should get what you originally had. So x times x will be x squared. x times 3 is 3x. So x squared plus 3x, and that matches perfectly. And that's essentially undistributing or finding factors. Now, this is not, again, not something that'll be tested directly on the SAT, but it's something that if you can recognize and if you're able to uh, see it quickly, uh, it can really help you with certain problems. I'll do one more. Let's do 2x squared plus, now let's do 10x squared plus 4xy plus 16y squared. Uh, let's do 16xy squared. So the question is, what is the thing that is com What are the things that are common to all these? What are the common factors? Well, I look at 10, 4, and 16 first off, and the only thing that's going to be common to all of them is the factor of 2. So I'm going to pull a 2 out. As for the algebraic letters, as for the variables. I've got two x's here, I've got an x and an x here, so I can pull out an x, and that's about it, because I've got y's here, but I've got no y here. So let's see what's left over. Here's just going to be 5x, because 2x times 5x is 10x squared. Here's just going to be 2y, and then here is going to be 8y squared. Now, you're ne probably never going to have something like this on the SAT, but this is kind of a harder, more complex example of what I, show you, what I showed you earlier for number two. 
Finally, number three will be factoring quadratics, or unfoiling, or unfoiling, if you're familiar with the FOIL acronym, first, outside, inside, last. Um, but basically, you're going to have some factor, some quadratic like this, and you've got to it's be equal to zero, and you've got to find the roots of it. You've got to find the cases in which this guy equals zero. Um, or you can just factor it out. Uh, normally, it doesn't necessarily have to equal zero, but often you'll see it in this context where it equals zero. So what we do is we set up our double bubble, as sometimes you hear it referred to, and what we need is these first terms I've got to multiply out to this. So you know these are going to be x for this example. The last terms I've got to multiply out to plus 4. And the middle terms, when we add them up, I've got to add up to minus 3. So the numbers here have got to multiply out to plus 4 and add up to minus 3. This is kind of where the art comes in of quadratics, where you kind of have to figure out, okay, what is going to be, what are going to be the numbers I'm going to need here? And you, you know, you can test out, well, let's see, 2 times 2 multiply out to 4, 4 times 1 multiply out to 4. Sometimes you'll see this called an SP chart, where P is for the products. You figure out all the products that could possibly multiply out to 4, and then you figure out what their sums are. Of course, changing, you could have 2 and, well, in this case, you have to have 2 and 2, or minus 2 times minus 2 will also multiply out to 4. So you kind of test out all the options. Eventually, when you do this enough, you just kind of get a sense of what's going to work, and you can test it really quickly and run through different options. In this case, it's going to be minus 1 and minus, uh, did, I write that, did I write that out wrong? I must have wrote that out wrong. Yeah, it's a minus 4. That's what happened. So make this a minus 4, and then it'll work. And then minus plus 4 and minus 1 for this example. Right? Uh, no. All the way around. There we go. So it's going to be, let me rewrite this, x plus 1 times x minus 4. Now again, just like with the unfoiling here, and really any of these examples, any factoring, you can always reverse it. You can always undo what you've done, and you better hope to get what you originally started with, otherwise you know you've made a mistake. So let's go ahead and do that. x times x is x squared. x times minus 4 is minus 4x. 1 times x is plus 1x, and 1 times minus 4 is minus 4. Now let me combine this. This is just going to be x squared minus 3x minus 4, and that is what I originally started with, so I know I'm good. And that's pretty much what you need to know for factoring for the SAT. There's not much else when it comes to factoring expressions that you need to be aware of.